Hey everyone, it's Jason. Welcome to a um, how to play or what is video for the Funkoverse series of games. Um, so before we jump into a how to play, just a brief idea of what the Funkoverse games are. So what they do is they, it's a strategy game to collect points. So you're going to have a grid based map. It's going to have various things and there's several different um, combinations you can mix and you're going to take characters like Batman or a Captain America um, or a Harry Potter and they're going to compete in various challenges uh, using special abilities they have uh, and various tokens. Um, there might be tokens on the board they have to collect. Um, or areas maybe that they have to stand in, like a targeted area. Um, and they're going to be trying to collect all these different types of gems for different points. Uh, using a cooldown meter on their powers and they each have various character cards. Um, and we'll go through all this in the video. Um, and they're going to have different types of modes, just like scrimmage and triumph and leaders, and there's Siege, and there's a bunch of different other ones. Um, so basically you're doing is you're taking these little mini Funko Pop figures that you get, and you're having them, um, you can play as teams, you can play as free-for-all, uh, players can control more than one, you can have, you could play two or three characters at a time, and you could compete depending on possibly the size of the map or how many you own. Um, and you can stay in the same world, or you can mix and match, like you can play just Harry Potter, or just Marvel, or just DC. Um, or like this, you could mix and match them all together and have them all play against each other. Um, with all the other different, uh, series there are. Um, <clears throat> and that's basically all the game is. So we're gonna jump in, kinda go step by step, uh, what all the different stuff is. Um... I will be following along with the rule book as well. I'll be showing off some of that just to explain it. Um, yeah, but there's a bunch of other characters. Like we have a Darkwing Duck. We have a T-Rex from Jurassic Park. Uh, Doc Brown from Back to the Future. Jack Skellington. And the Kool-Aid Man. Just as a variety. I mean, there's also um, Game of Thrones, Rick and Morty, Golden Girls. Um... I can't, I'm missing some. Alice in Wonderland, uh, plus they released more and have different expansions for each one. Um, so we're going to go through and start looking at what all the different components are. Alright, so the first thing you're going to need to decide before you even get ready to play the game is what board or map you're going to use. Um, every game... Um, with the exception of Stangle, which is three different types. There's the big box, which will have four characters. There's small boxes, which have two characters. And then there's solo box, which just has a single character. Um, so if you're playing with either the, the big boxes or the small boxes, two or four characters, you will get a map. Um, and they fold up. Um, and it's going to just... Not, the map's going to determine two different things. Is One, kind of like uh, what different uh, maybe like kind of play style where borders and stuff are and it's going to determine what type of game you're playing each map has two different modes or like scenarios uh that are attached to it um and we'll look at those in just a moment just gonna go over a couple of different boards so you can see the differences so they're all grid based uh so i have a little grid down here i'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see that um and then they're also going to have some of them have blue lines some have red lines it just might depend on the uh world or uh maybe which one's came first basically that's your border of a building so if i can't zoom up much more but if i look at this this uh construction yard here we have an outside blue edge that's the outside border of the map um and here we have like a wall and then we have some inner walls here so these are areas your characters can't pass through. So they can walk through this tunnel, they can walk anywhere in here, they just can't walk through a wall, which obviously makes sense. Um, alternatively, like we have this jewelry store here. This is a Batman themed map. You have the same thing, you have outside borders, some inside walls. Um, 
same here, like this building. Like, they don't have borders necessarily on all of the, like, top of the building. Like, they can climb up or jump off different stuff. You, just, you know, makes sense. You can go up and down different pipes. Like, there's a pipe here. There's a walkway there. Um, different stuff. Like, there's no border on the Batmobile. She can kind of walk all over the Batmobile if you want. Um, just to look at something different. So, this is another side of this map. And this one is a Joker map. But you're going to see some of these are not straight lines. These are different objects. So, like, here you can still stand in any of these spaces around it. Because it's not taking up enough space. There's still enough space for your figure to stand. Uh, but then, flip this upside down. You're going to get some like this that are really odd shaped. But you can still see where you can stand. You can get in this corner here. Um... Just some different ideas. There's some different other shapes there. So you have a big, you can get big giant boards like this in the four player, the four character boxes. Um, <clears throat> we have another one like we have the Marvel one. This is a showing off a little bit different theming. So this is uh, the Shield Headquarters. You can see it has a little bit different. It has some angular red ones here. And then it has walls here like where computer terminals are. Like you can't jump through the monitors. You can walk in the spaces in front of them. Um, otherwise this one doesn't have a lot of restrictions. You can go pretty much anywhere on the map except for those little areas. But there's no rooms. Like the Batman one had different rooms in there. <clears throat> uh, and then if we flip it over we have Shuri's Lab. This is kind of similar. It has a bunch of lines for little spots. There's some little dots in here that there's just something in the way. Um, otherwise, there's lots of open space you can do stuff. Uh, another difference on this map is this has little starting counters on there. Um, and this is like so if you're playing a specific mode or scenario. You already have some of these meters for your cool gowns for your characters. Which, again, is something we'll go over when we get to that section um i do want to show off two other different just different types of maps so we've seen superhero maps so let's see something that's a little bit different so this is one for the golden girls so it is their apartment building um and just show this off for a hundred percent complete drastic difference in what you can get so like that first batman map it has different rooms different layouts they have the red lines um but if you're playing games where you have to maybe get to like certain points or you have to uh, be in a certain area and control it for so many turns to get points and things like that. So, you know, some of these rooms with these maps with rooms might make that a little bit more difficult or interesting because you can trap people versus like that Marvel one where it was very open. Now, if we flip this one to the other side, this is actually a very smaller map because it's just a beachfront. Um, so you got open open with two walkways so again it's going to create a different gameplay play style than that other map um but it's not going to necessarily have the same mode um although with a final board game you can always play however you want the other thing is a lot of these maps smaller maps on some of their double sides will have um little like helpers here so they're kind of nice for beginners um it's showing you put your character cards here where you can put your status or item cards um, or if you have a second player, you can put that card there, your tokens. Um, just to help maybe keep track of some of that, make it a little bit easier. And then the last map we're going to look at right now is Alice in Wonderland. And again, just trying to show off a couple different types. So, whoops. We have another short map like that. We have the Mad Hatter's birthday party table. Um, but this is kind of just a little, like... It's those pink lines and stuff, right? But it's like some where the chairs are. Tables you can't walk, like stand on the platters, but you can walk all over the tables. But otherwise, yeah, it's a fairly open map. But it gives you a little bit of difference. And it has those little starter pieces down there. And then if we flip it to the other side, it is the woods slash uh, croquet field. Um, which is really the only obstacles are these three big trees here otherwise you can go anywhere else on this map uh so this one can make for something interesting because it's a lot more open um so that's kind of neat 
Um, I'll probably use this map to maybe show off some of the, um, like, movements and things like that just because it's so big. Or so, uh, light colored versus the Batman map. Um, so the next thing I do want to jump into is, you have, like, after you've picked your map, so let's say I have picked this Shield Headquarters map. So then the next thing you do is you pick from one of the two cards you are giving um, for your different things. So this one's going to say it is the Helicarrier Bridge, and on the other side it is going to be Shuri's Lab. And then the other card has the same thing, Shuri's Lab, and then you flip it to the other side, and it is the Helicarrier Base. So there is two for each. So two for one side, two for the other. So it's going to give you two different gameplay modes per each area. So then after you pick a map, then you gotta pick what type of game you're playing. So you could play Leaders, um, or this one you could play Siege, which are, you can see right here, they're gonna show different setup areas on the map. So it's the same map, um, but one of them, your characters each start here, and they're trying to get to points A, B, C, and D, and then they have some stars here, that will have different effects. The other one, Player 1 starts on the starting area on the outside. Player 2 starts in the middle, and then they have A, B, C, and D. So they have different effects there. So it's going to, you know, even just different setup areas, but they don't print them on the map. That way you can use different things. Um, lots of games will have, like, leaders or flags as another popular one. Be the same mode over and over and over. Some of them have started adding new ones, like Siege. Um, so if we flip over the sh to the Shuri's lab, we have a scrimmage and triumph. And you can see that they have roughly-ish the same type of starting areas. But this thing's also meant for a four-player game. Um, so you can have one player, two player, three player, four player. Where the other one's meant for a two players. So there's some differences there. And then if we looked at some of the different stuff in there. So like leader says, matching your team's strength against your opponent's weaknesses is an essential part of combat leadership. The skill of all the Avengers you master. Show your rivals who is more effective. See scenario set up in the instructions. So you can check the instruction booklets they come with. They'll tell you stuff. Um, so pick a character, be a leader. So different stuff you're gonna. But what you're ultimately trying to do is these gaining points. So um, if your leader knocks out your rival leader, you gain four points. Leader knocks your leader's ally knocks out a rival leader, you gain three points. Your leader knocks out a rival, two points. Ally knocks out a rival, one point. If you interact with a point marker, uh, which are like these stars, um, you can gain a point. So there's four different ways to gain points there. And then winning player with two characters per side, six points. Or if you have three, you gain ten points. So it's just the first who can knock out the other characters first. Um, or if we play a game like Siege, it's going to be the same type of thing, up to six points. But there's different effects. So this one says, at the end of round one, if your defender has at least one character in the melee, they gain one point. One additional point if you have more characters than the attacker. Um, at the end of the round, if the attacker has at least one character in the me melee, they gain one point. And one additional point if they have at least as many characters in melee defender. If you knock out a rival, gain a point. If you interact with a point marker, Gain a point. So this, you know, this one so it's like you're trying to kind of king of the hill, stay in the middle, um, and defeat the other people. So yeah, just some other different modes. Like scrimmage here, you set these targets up. Uh, again, you're just trying to gain points. Almost all these games are based on getting points at some point. Um, but if you challenge an opponent's target marker and win, gain one point. That point has more points than you, gain two points instead. If you interact with a point marker, gain one point. If you knock out a rival or a character standing adjacent to a rival, gain a point. So the idea here is, um, like you start, if the white character starts here, they're trying to get to one of these other spots, um, and basically if they get to their point and they interact with their little target token, they gain a point. So they're trying to run over, gain a point, and then, you know, not get hurt. Um, if they get knocked out, then they lose a point. Or they, uh, the other player gets a point. So it's kind of a capture the flagish type game. Because you can also run to these points for safety. Um, and again, some of this you have to read in the actual instruction book. Like to have a little bit more explanation of the rules. Um, 
And then Triumph is sort of a similar thing. It's more of an actual King of the Hill, I guess, because you're trying to be on the throne. Um, there's just a couple different ways in that particular map um, that you can play. So once, I say, once you pick out your map, then you got to pick out what type of game you want to play. Um, conversely, you could pick out what type of game you want to play and then pick a map that goes with it. Or if you're playing Harry Potter, you pick a Harry Potter map. If you have three different sets, you might have to choose. Um, so just some of the other like modes is we have uh, territory, like trying to just control different points. You start here, you want to try and end the turn in the scoring area. Uh, we have flags, just basically capture the flag. You want to get to the opponent's area, steal their flag, and get back. Um, there's a control, where you want to be in control areas for so certain amount of time, things like that. But again, every time you do stuff, you're going to gain points. Um, the control, territory, flags, and leaders are what most games have. Um, so those are the four basic ones. Some of the newer sets have been adding in new modes. Let's see if I can find any other different ones. Control, leaders, flag, triumph. Uh, we do have infiltrate. This is a new one that they started. This is a Game of Thrones has this one, as well as um, Nightmare Before Christmas. So this kind of ends up being the same type of, like, you're trying to get in, infiltrate your little rook tokens. So there's a different type. Um, Alice in Wonderland added the runners. Uh, so this is more like you try and get to there and get back, yo, know, type of game. Um, and I'm just really simplifying these, um, just for the sake of this video. Alice in Wonderland is also adding a special croquet game, um, which adds extra little croquet tokens. And this is maybe one of these reasons why you might buy a game, maybe you're not really big on Alice in Wonderland, but you'd love to have Batman and Robin play a game of croquet. Um, and you could move some of the. You could always play some of these on different maps. You just have to figure out where your where your points and your tokens go on your on your own. Like these are all more or less um, starting guides. You don't just buy this and have to figure out how to play the game on your own. Um, you can buy these, and then it just kind of tells you how to set everything up. All right, so that's what you have to do there. Then the next thing you'd have to pick out will be your characters. Um, so we're going to take a look at the characters and some of their cards. Um, so you have an idea of why you might... Alright, so we're going to look at characters. So, like I said, games that come with uh, four players. You can play as you know, either a four-player game, each person has one. Or you could take two and two. Uh, uh, you get one of the games on as two players, you just play one versus one, but once you buy more expansions, again, you can mix and match it. Um, and then some of the games also have more expansions, like the Batman, the DC Universe, I should say, has um, the big base game with four players, and has two small sets, the Jurassic Park has um, an additional one with two extra, a four-pack and a two-pack. The Harry Potter has two four-packs and one two-pack. Uh, the Golden Girls comes in two different two packs. You could buy that and have four characters. Some of the other ones just only have two, like Rick and Morty um, or Back to the Future. And then some that have solo characters, so you're going to have to buy another set to work with them. Um, but that's what makes this game also a fun collectible. You can buy and collect whoever you want, you can mix and match them. Um, so, right now, we're just going to look at Captain America and Batman. So, I'm going to pull. Just one of their cards first. Alright, so relevant information on here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so every character is going to have at least two, to th at least for sure two, but I think all of them have three skills. Um, some might have four, some might have two, but I'm pretty sure they generally all have three different skills. So these are different abilities you can use during the game. Um, they are going to be somewhat repeatable or 
have the same type of things like just says Challenge 3. There's going to be other characters that have abilities that say Challenge 3 that may or may not, may do something else, may not. Um, but the idea is to make each one a little bit, each character feel more unique than just giving everyone the same actions. Um, then on the bottom, they're also going to have a special, like, active or um, unique ability to them. This would be something that um, generally only they can do, um, or it's, like, a special thing for them. They also have a little defense symbol in the corner, which, if they're being challenged, it's going to show how many dice they roll to try and prevent that challenge. Um, and when we get to the, we'll do a section on this about how the actual challenges work. Um... So the other thing you're going to see are different colored abilities. There's like a per, like a blue swirl, a blue triangle, and then they have some dots down here. Um, so if we look at Captain America's, he has three different colored abilities and has three different dots. So your dots will represent how many different skill tokens you get. So the skill tokens are going to be these little guys. And there's blue, yellow, gray and red um and each one kind of references a different type of ability um red is kind of like strength um i mean there's some more different different aspects to it let's actually lists it right here in the book really nicely so ability types uh characters are the blue ones have fit x Exhibit fitness, agility, coordination, skills often provide characters with way to be faster or more flexible. Uh, the red ones are abilities with force minus strength and fortitude. Often provide ways for characters to be mighty or more resilient. The tech gear, the gray one. Uh, cunning, ingenuity, and deception. Often provide ways for characters to be tricky or uh, inhibit rivals. And the yellow one is... Exhibits leadership, charisma, and willpower. It gives, often provides ways to bolster allies or give them extra actions. So, with that, we can kind of see that. So, let's look at Batman again. His blue one here is kind of a it's like agility movement. So, he has a grappling swing. Um, it says, choose a rival within three squares of Batman. Uh, the Batman can see and place Batman adjacent to them. Do a challenge of two to them. So, it's letting him move. Um, and the little star next to it means it's a challenge. Challenges where you get to roll dice against another character uh, to try and knock them down. Um, so he also has Pow, which is a strength, which just lets him do a challenge for three. Um, or he has Relentless, which uh, Batman can do this when knocked down. You can stand him up, so you can spend the ability to stand up. Um, getting knocked down and knocked out... Um, which terms we'll go over later, are just different ways to hinder your player from doing stuff. Um, so Batman has, she has three different skills, but he's only going to have a one blue and one red. Captain America is going to get one of each color, and he has one ability of each color. Um, which also means, if he spends a red, he can't use his red ability anymore. He spends his blue, he can't use his other blue ability um, until they cool down. So it, the numbers inside, they show a meter. Um, or they're, gonna, they're going to represent the meter. So you have these cool down tracks here. Um, so when Captain America plays, no, you move, and he does his challenge three, and he pushes the target one square, you're going to take your one blue token and put it on the three. Um, then when the uh, like refresh or recovery stage happens... Um, this will move down and then the next time it'll move down and once it's on one and it moves off Then you get to use it again. So he has to wait essentially three turns to use back again um, Same thing with his other is a uh, shield throw and I can do this all day So his abilities might be more powerful, but they take longer to, to use more often Where Batman has a three a two and a one so now his two and his one have to share so if he spends his two for his pow, it's going to go on there. He's going to have to wait one, two turns to use it again. But if he uses his, Rel his Relentless, he can use it again right away. Um, but then either way, if he has his two on there, he can still use his three. So he plays a two on one turn, he'll move down. He could play his three, and then he'll move down and move off. So he can do different actions having different colors. Uh, so there's going to be some differences there. 
Um, and it's just stuff to kind of keep an eye on when you're looking at your different characters. Um, yeah, so that's how that's going to work. If a character ever gets knocked out, so first they have to get knocked down, so they get knocked down, you lay them down on the side. Um, and again, I'll explain how you do that later. Um, then if they get challenged and defeated again, they get knocked out. Then they go back on the map. They go back on the recovery board. You literally pull them off the map, and then they have to wait a turn to come back into play. Um, so it's just a good way to, like, I'm trying to, like, capture the zone or get to that, and that guy's in my way. Just knock him out and get him off the map. Um, so we're going to quickly look at some of the other characters that we have. I'm not going to go through every character in the game. We're just going to take a quick glance to see what some of the different abilities are. Um, the other thing is it's kind of neat. So on the backs and on, um, even on the front, you can see there, they're going to have different colors. That represents what, like, universe or world you are. So, like, yellow, blue, red. They kind of have, they've been pretty good at getting fairly different shades. Um, because even, like, so here's a red and a red, but the Jurassic Park is more red and black versus just red for the marble. Um, plus they have a little indication down the back of what sex they are. Um, that's also anyway. So like Doc Brown here gets great greens and blues, but he has a three, a three, and a one. So there's gonna have some different stuff there. We have a Darkwing Duck who's gonna have some grazing uh, blues. Get some different, you know, a two, a one, a three. Jack Skeleton gets some yellows and a blue. Harry Potter has uh, some blues and yellows. The Kool Aid Man gets some blues and reds. Um, and they have, he has special abilities down here too, which are fairly interesting. Um, and then the last one I have sitting out here is the T Rex, which just has red, but he gets two red tokens. So he can spend one and then you can do his other one. So that's the other thing you have to decide is what character you want to play as. Um, there are other factors we have to do to set up because we have, um, my box and stuff. We have other little things we can add into the game. So there are items that characters can have. They have physical little items that you can give to a character and put in their hand. Um, and then they get a little card that represents that specific item. So these are other things you'd have to pick out. Um, I'm not going to specifically find the mallet, but like we have things like a hoverboard, and they'll say item on the back. Um, Darkwing Duck has a gas gun. Wonder Woman has a lasso of truth. Um, from Alice in Wonderland, we have two different types of mallets. Um, so you're going to have different items you can attach to your characters which are going to do various things. Some have costs to them, um, some don't. They just they use them whenever you need to use them or whenever they say you can use them. Um, yeah, so the bun bunch of different items you get. Goggles, claws, hammers, a purse, whips. Um... There are also a couple other different cards. That characters can have. Which are called status cards. So items can be can be attached to any single character. So the mallet that I have Captain America currently holding. Is generally associated with Harley Quinn. But you can have any character use it in a game. So it's. Another neat aspect of buying multiple sets, you can get more maps, more characters, more items, different things to use. Um, then there are abilities that are specific to characters. So like, the Queen of Hearts has a temper card. So she'll be like, on her actual player, her character card, it'll say one of the abilities will allow her to attach or do that. Um, some characters have one, some characters have multiple. Like, Service Snape has three different abilities. There's a Bottled Fame, Ensnared Senses, and Brood Glory. Um, so this might also make a difference on who you decide you might want. Because some characters have other different abilities. Uh, Batgirl, for example, gets two copies of this Intel ability. 
Um, there are some other ones that have ones that just affect the way they play, like the shark from Jaws has emerged, or it flips over and he's submerged, which will give him different effects that he can do. So there's a couple of different things there as well. Um, the last thing there would be are companion cards. So there are some cards called companions, which work very similar to items. You can give your characters them, um, and they're, they act as little tokens. So they're little extra allies. So um, you can have Zero here, who has the abilities Move, and he has Fetch. Um, then he only has one defense, which shows on his little token. And they have one side for regular and one side for knockdown. Knock um, but it gives them extra little abilities. And there's a few other characters that have these companions. Um, which now that I'm going to try and look for one, I'm not going to be able to find it. I know at least one more character has one. Yes, there's also, I know for sure, there's Ghost from Game of Thrones. Uh, but again, these aren't specifically attached to a character, um, although in continuity and universe, they might be. Um, so there are those. Those would also make a difference on someone you may choose or think you could attach when you're playing the game. Um, and we'll kind of go through that during setup on when you choose what you have. Um, the last thing, just to point out, is they have generic character tokens. So I'm not going to probably grab the right ones, but you're going to get cards like Shield Agent, which are just going to have all your basic moves. So like This is stuff that every character can do. Move, challenge, assist, interact, and rally. Um, and this is so if you want to play uh, each character having two players, but you don't have enough pops yet, uh, or Funkos. So if you bought like the Avenger set, which has Captain America, Iron Man, Black Widow, and Iron and uh, Captain America, Iron Man, Black Panther, and Black Widow. Um, and you want to play a four-player game, but each player wants to have two characters. You could give one character a Shield Agent, the Iron Drone, the Dejora Milaje, and the Shield Operative. So now each player gets a special Funko with special abilities and then they get like a generic one which I don't have the exact token for it but it would be like this like a hyena warrior so it's sort of like them companions they're a little bit stronger they can do more stuff than a companion but they don't have um any special abilities um and then every set always comes with at least one of these or two of these cards one for Usually one for every character. So if you have four characters, you get four cards. If you have two, you get two. I mean, we have all these different ones. Wolfman, Robot, Swimmer, uh, Scientist, Slithering Student, um, Stark Soldier, Server, Grocer, Guard, Henchman. Uh, they're all generic things. They don't have specific people. Um, and then usually they come in a black color, which is like the bad guy and then they have the white ones which are usually the good guy which is usually how they represent the characters although not all sets necessarily have a good guy and bad guy um like rick and morty or back to the future with doc brown and um oh why did i just forget his name marty mcfly there's not really a good guy bad guy all right so that's what you have to tie aside is your characters so what we're going to look at next is we're actually going to kind of go through the book and look at what you can do on your turns, um, movement, and things like that. Alright, so for basic setup, you're going to follow your scenario cards. So if you pick your map, you pick your characters, um, you're going to place all your cards down. Uh, place everything down. So you're going to pick your starting areas for your characters. So each character is going to get their starting area. Here they're showing them with the Funko Pop and their uh, unique or generic guy. Um, they're also going to have their character card, their generic card, 
the ability tokens they have, and then you'd have set aside these little exhaust tokens, which are going to be uh, just a little crossed out mark. This is just going to show that you've used that used that character that turn, uh, so you don't accidentally use the same character twice. You're also going to set aside a pool of dice and a pool of points, um, and then if the map requires any specific markers, you put them on there at that point as well. That is basic gameplay. If your character has any extra tokens, like Black Panther's energy tokens, um, you do that as well. And there's also a first player marker, which is a big triangle. You just give that to whichever player goes first, and then, you, and then during the turn, each player gets to act, and then you pass it to the next player, so then that player is the first player. That way you know which order you're going in. Um, so again, you get a like first player tokens just so you don't get confused. That is the basic setup. The only additional thing it would be on here is if you're using the item cards um, or companions or if they have um, extra status cards, stuff like that, then you just attribute that to the character it goes with. Um, so to start off here is during your turn, you're going to choose one of your characters that does not have an exhausted character. Um, so at the beginning of the game, no one would. Um, but that way you can, choose, you can attack with your Funko character first, or you can use your uh, generic character. Or if you have three Funkos, you can pick which one you want. You don't always have to do them in the same order. So if I had, you know, Captain America, Batman, Harry Potter, I don't always have to take my turns in that order. Because maybe one might be more advantageous than the other. Um, but what you get to do are two different actions, which are the ones that are listed on the generic character cards. So you get to move, challenge, assist, and interact are the four basic abilities. Um, so yeah, they're going to have them listed on here as well. So you have move up to two spaces, which is very easy to do. So we're going to slide my map back down here. So, you can move with a character. We're just going to go through each one of these one at a time. So, to move is you can move two spaces. You can move one, two. You can move one, two this way. You can, um, you can move diagonal. The only thing you can't do is, so these guys are rivals. They have different bases. That's how you can tell they're rivals. Is Darkwing Duck can't move through Harry Potter. If he wants to go around, he can go, uh, can go diagonal around either way um or he can try and go way around but you can't walk through him um you can't move th you can't move through an opposing player now if he had an ally on here such as batman he could move through batman because batman would step out of his way but a rival character's gonna just stand there and be like no i'm not letting you pass um so there is always that you can do um you also can't move through an obstacle. Um, oops, I should probably show it on the other side. So there's this tree here. So I can't move through this tree because it has that border. Um, same thing here. There's there's a little tiny gap there. Um, I would probably say you can't... You, you could probably move around this tree. Um, but I can't move through this one even though there's a little, little smidge showing. Um, you kind of just got to you know, maybe play it by ear on some of these. Like, this one's a little bit harder to tell, but some, um, you know, you'll, you can kind of figure it out. Then, I am missing my dice. And there goes everything, everywhere. All right, the next thing you can do is you can challenge um, that be any part of the little burst mark. So it says roll two dice to challenge an adjacent rival. So adjacent means they have to be on a square next to you. Um, so this is not adjacent. Um, there are character abilities that let you do ranged attacks. You can hit from multiple spaces away, um, which is what makes characters a little bit, you know, definitely make some better. So, like, if I look at Captain America here, his shield throw is a challenge. This is range three, challenge one. 
uh, plus you get rolling extra dice for each type of ability. But now, like this bottom one here says challenge three. So you get a challenge for three, um, so it's a more powerful, but you have to be next to them. Or challenge one, you challenge less. Your basic challenge is a challenge two. Um, so whatever number is after challenge is how many dice you get to roll. So if we were just doing a challenge two, uh, Darkwing Duck is going to attack Harry Potter, you're going to get to roll one of these dice. For every burst symbol, which is just a challenge symbol, it counts as one point. For every exclamation point, it counts as three. Um, and that's for attacking. For defense, it's the same thing. It's one for every shield, three for every exclamation point. So if I roll for Darkwing Duck, he got one. So he does one challenge towards uh, Harry Potter. Harry Potter rolled, got two shields, so he blocked it because he did enough. Because there is more, so we take away this, so there's two to one. Is how that would work. Now, if I had rolled a three, I would have won because he would have had three points versus two. Um, that's as simple as how challenges are. You just roll a die. Um, and it says, when a standing rival is challenged, the losing and loses the challenge, the rival is knocked down. So now Harry Potter is going to get knocked down. So basically what that means is he can't do anything on his next turn. Um, he can't move, he can't do his challenges or his abilities unless they specify something of him being knocked down. Um, and that's a nice thing about not doing the challenges, is when you're stopping your opponent from doing things. Um, so I'm going to stand him back up. Okay, I'm going to leave him laying down. So then, our third ability on here is Assist. Stand up an adjacent ally. So, Captain America gets two actions. So, he's going to spend one, two, get next to Harry Potter. So, he gets his two movements. And then, he's going to use his Assist to stand him back up. And now, this saves Harry Potter from having to spend extra time doing extra abilities. Um... And then the third one we have is interact. Because act, action differs depending on the scenario. So it might be, um, one might say challenge, one might say grab this point, one might say stand here. Uh, there are various different things you can do for interact. Um, so it's just kind of depending on you guys see. Then the last thing they add on here is not really, it's not one of your two actions, it's rally. So you could use your two actions to stand up. So, if Captain America was, like, way down here somewhere, and he couldn't get to Harry Potter, and it becomes his turn, he could spend both of his actions just to stand up. But now his turn's over. He can't do anything else. Um, so it's not technically considered part of your two actions, but it, it is because it uses both of your actions. Um... Alternatively, out of your two actions, you can also do either one of your special abilities on your card. So this is for Captain America, you use shield throw or his no you move ability. Or you can use an attachment. This is an action, um, it's not used in this first scenario. But that would be like if I had this pink Flamingo Malik, I could move one and challenge three with that. Um... And so that's a, diff that's a different way of doing that. So there's your different things you can do. Alright, so then after you've done your two actions, or you've rallied, now you exhaust your character. You put your exhausted marker on your character uh, to show you got it. And then the next player takes a turn. Um, and then you keep going around. It says, ending around, uh, when each player is exhausted, all their characters. So if you're playing a two-player game, it's I go, like player A goes, player B. Player A, player B. Um, if you're playing a team mode, usually it's team A, team B, team A, team B. Um, but it's like player one, player two, player three, player four. You, you, you should go back and forth in like a line just to keep it fair so that each person on a team, so one team doesn't go two times in a row. Um, and then you get a refresh, remove all exhausted markers from the character. Um, and select the first player. The other thing you do during the end round is beginning with the first player. Each player shifts everything on their cooldown track one number. 
then you should shift off one return to play so that was our big giant red marker card that we had earlier whoops just about knocked my table over so that would be our card here that we would put our tokens on so when you cool down at the end of the turn this should move over and then if it moves off then you get it back um another thing to show off is on the item cards so this one if i use this as one of my actions it has a two so when i use it i put it down here on two that way i know that it's been used and i can't use it on as my second action and i have to let it cool down so then end of my turn it would go down one and then after the end of my next turn it would move one more um but that happens at the end of the full round so after everybody's went then everything moves down once now everyone gets another full turn and then it goes a second time so you gotta kind of be strategic on when you use certain abilities or items so that is the basic idea of that there are other special things different rules for different games um they'll get set up like if you have different scenarios that have items that do this or that but those are different these are things that we won't worry about right now the other thing we do want to show off though is we talked about adjacency i'm just going to show some of the pictures in the book um is adjacency you have to first of all be able to see your character you can't see through objects so like walls um so let me actually do this let's flip out our maps all right we switched to a map with some walls so there's a wall right here i'm gonna move him all the way right in front of the kool-aid man and there's a wall on this side by doc brown so doc brown and kool-aid man both have the white bases so they're on a team and jack Skellington and the t-rex have black bases so they're on the same team so when you have to determine adjacency it has to be able you have to be next to there can't be anything in between them so I'm going to slide him out of the way again. Um, so if we zoom up on this corner here, and I know their shading makes this a little bit hard to see, but there's a corner right between these two, so they're not adjacent. If they were over a spot, diagonally they're adjacent and that's fine, but there's a wall there. So you can't be adjacent to someone that's around the corner of a wall. Um, then the other thing would be line of sight. So if I put him back over here and we zoom back out, um, he can see, these two guys can see each other because there's nothing interrupting in their way. Um, but Jack Skellington, he can't see Kool-Aid Man. He can't see around a corner. He also definitely can't see Doc Brown because Doc Brown is in another room. Same thing, Kool-Aid Man and Doc Brown can't see each other. Or if I have the Rex here, these two can't see each other. Um, so you can't see through a wall. The other thing you can and can't do is if we did this and we lined all four characters up in a row is currently Kool-Aid Man can see Jack Skellington. Uh, Jack Skellington can see Kool-Aid Man, the T-Rex, and Doc Brown. Doc Brown can see the T-Rex and the T-Rex can see all four characters. And the reason for this is allies can see through each other but they can't see through rivals and it works the same way the same theory as when you're moving um so if jack skellington's trying to look over here at doc brown he can be like hey rex i'm trying to look over there and rex can kind of be like oh can you see him now he can kind of like you know screw out of the way but if doc brown is trying to look over at jack skellington and he yells at the t-rex t-rex is like no I'm not going to look up, like, I'm not going to move so you can attack my, my friend. Um, so you can't attack through targets. Um, another unique one is, um, and the same thing's going to work if you have a token out versus an actual Funko Pop. Um, is that if you have, scoop these guys down. So now I have these two guys adjacent to each other. So they're sitting here chit-chatting. So they can obviously see each other. Everyone here can currently see each other. Because even though there's two rivals here, 
these two guys can see between them because there's a diagonal gap there. Because that would be a movable gap. They can move through that gap. Um, if a character is laying down, um, you can still see through them. You can see over a character that's been knocked down. Um, you can't see through rivals, you can see through allies. Unless the rival is knocked down, then you can see over their body as it's laying on the floor. Um, and movement works basically the same way. You can't move through rivals, you can move through allies. Um, although, you can't ever stop on the same spot as one. You can't have guys stacked on top of each other. They have to end their turn on one side or the other. Um, and that is that's the basic of the rules so there are other keywords and stuff I'm going to slide this out of the way so if I look back at the book there's a glossy of all these other different keywords like pushing things away um, decreasing ability costs uh, minion tokens uh, near far placing stuff status cards we talked about you know, just other different things that will come up if it's going to affect your game it will be in your specific rule book um, so if you buy if you buy a game you're gonna get one of the rule books for it it'll tell you um, how to play with them specific new abilities um, or keywords that you have so you don't have to try and figure them out so i'm not going to go through every single one this is just more or less a simple game game mechanic play so far these are all the different sets i have um so a good example of that is this is a solo set we have the kool-aid man so it's going to have some strategies and how to play him it's also going to explain his special ability um so he has like wall and rubble tokens so basically it's saying if there's a wall of obstructions, it's not a square object like a full, like, box thing. Um, like one of the trees, for example, that has a solid border all the way around it. But it's just like a wall in, like, one of these rooms. He can place these special rubble tokens on them. Um, and then he can make, he can walk through them. And that's his special ability. Uh, so it's kind of a neat idea. And then, like, Darkwing Duck has, like, gas tokens. Um, and they do different stuff like that. Um, yeah, so every character has a little bit unique different stuff. They have their different items. You can mix and match. Um, so I hope you guys... I hope this gives you a good idea or at least a basic idea of how to play the game. Uh, so check out my other Funkoverse videos where I'm actually going to go through each box set. And we're going to look at each character. Um, and there you go. See you guys later. Bye.